Joining me now is Andrew Dowling. He is a senior lecturer in Hispanic Studies at Cardiff University. And in Barcelona, Carlos Silva. He's a senior member of the Pro-Unity Political Party Union, Progress and Democracy. Thanks both so much for joining us. Andrew, I'll start with you. I mean, why did ETA actually make this decision? Had it just been too many years of fruitless battle or is there more political strategy to it? I think it's an element of both. I mean, certainly for a long period of time since the 1990s, ETA has been on a kind of downward spiral in terms of its capacity, really, to carry out violent acts. So they've been diminishing year by year. There has been a kind of a slow burn, if you want, in terms of a peace process um, that was partly inspired by what was going on in Northern Ireland. And the fact that we haven't seen any um, violent incidents associated with ETA since 2011, I think what's happened this week, if, if you want the actual complete disbandment of the organisation, is kind of like the confirmation, the end point of a long downwards process where essentially carrying on makes no sense at all. Carrying on as ETA, the militant uh, movement that it was, yeah. makes no sense at all. But what about politically? Is there still a role there to be played? Well, one of, one of the uh, principal demands for ETA, which emerged in the late 1950s, was uh, the independence of the Basque country. And there's still, uh, you know, there's still a, a strong degree of support in the Basque country for independence. It, it's a minority trend. It, you know, figures vary between 30, 40 percent of the population in terms of the polls. But what ETA has done, in a sense, they've decided that it is no longer, if you want, strategically um, of value to continue with a campaign of violence and that they support the political process, they support a political road to achieving of independence. So again, you know, I'd bring in the parallels with Northern Ireland. Irish republicanism abandons what they call the armed struggle and says, we're going to aim for Irish unification through the ballot box, through peaceful means. And I think the same um, policy is in place with ETA, that we're abandoning violence, we're abandoning armed struggle, but we can continue for the goal of an independent Basque country through democratic mechanisms. Okay, so Carlos, I mean, is ETA gone as far as you're concerned, or is it just rebranding? And is there room in that case in Spanish political landscape for a party, a political movement that's associated with former ETA members? Well, well, well I think that's the key point in the whole issue. I think that one very important, one essential battle we mustn't lose now in this. Um, 50, uh, five decade uh, war against terror is that of, of language and that of the narrative. I think that we must listen to the victims and uh, we mustn't um, pay much attention or be distracted by, by the noise of, these, of the terrorist propaganda. I think that they're trying to portray themselves publicly in the international, in front of the international opinion as um, political actors that are trying to reconduct the strategy and to um, to um, change uh, to a different stage and becoming from um, having some legitimate goals that, that now they want to defend politically. And that is um, totally unacceptable. I think that um, they have um, caused um, great pain in the, in the Basque society and, and also in, in the Spanish society. And they have um, tried to achieve that by, by um, submitting that, that society to terror and to, and, and to death for uh, 50 years. And it's totally unacceptable that now they pretend um, to become political okay. actors in, in a... Okay. So you're saying ETA, as a militant organization, is not welcome. But what about those who are not militant, were not part of ETA, but that still sympathize with the Basque separatist movement, or I should just say the Basque... C could I, c could I come go in? Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. Um, firstly, um, ETA emerged under conditions of the Franco dictatorship, where there was no political route to either democracy, there were no, no legal parties, there were no legal elections. ETA emerged um, as its campaign of, of violence in the late 1950s because Spain was a military and police dictatorship. And Spain didn't stop becoming a police and military dictatorship in the 1970s. Yes, absolutely, there are victims of ETA, but you should also remember that ETA's caused over 800 victims. The Spanish security forces, the Spanish police, 
other organizations associated have also killed over 350 people since the middle of the 1960s as well so those those people are also victims as well it's it's a political conflict they're not just terrorists you know it's 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 a simplistic argument to say that we're just dealing with terrorism and all we should do is just lock them up that never solves any political conflict where violence involved. It's a violent conflict where terrible violence has happened, just like, you know, completely uh, referring to right. the case of Ireland, terrible violence has happened, but the British government in the peace process in Northern Ireland released the prisoners on both sides because they recognized it was a political conflict. Understood. And that was what I was getting to well, with Carlos there. I mean, is Madrid going to have to reconcile with a movement in the Basque country that is about independence and gaining independence peacefully. Well, I don't agree with, with Andre in the fact that, that it's a political, uh, a political issue. Um, the terrorist uh, molded um, society to, um, and submitted society to, to the terror. So there were uh, more than 100,000 people um, who had to, to leave the Basque country. So they, they created uh, a society and, and uh, created a situation that is not, that is not um, um, or that must be reconstructed. So they can't gain any, any benefits for, from stop killing people. Um, I mean, all the ideas can be defended in democracy. And, and I, I want to remember uh, the audience that most of the killings of, of ETA were, due, uh, were done during democracy in the, in the 80s, in, in late 80s and, and early 90s. So um, um, I think that they, they, they can't um, go unpunished after 50 years of, of violence. They can't um, try to become a political party. There are other political ways, other political means um, to defend all kinds of, of, of ideas in, in democracy. But you, you can't uh, pretend or try to get some, some benefit and uh, just say that there were two parties involved in, uh, two legitimate parties involved in, in a conflict, which is absolutely true. That's part of the, of the um, terrorist propaganda. Okay, Andrew, if I can, let's talk about then the independence movement sure. within the Basque country today. ETA related or otherwise, if they sympathize with ETA, I think that's kind of beside the point right now. Let's, let's look forward politically. And does the fact that separatists in Catalonia got as far as actually holding a referendum on their independence um, have anything to do with what ETA is doing today? Or at the very least, are those who are independence minded in the Basque country take inspiration from what they're seeing in Catalonia? I think, yeah, think things have certainly shifted. You know, if, if, we were, if we were talking about nationalist problems in Spain 10 years ago or in the 90s or the 80s, we would have been talking about the Basque country. Things have changed. In the past 10 years, essentially, um, it's been Catalonia that has risen to incredible degree of prominence, you know, and on global attention, really, in the autumn of 2017. And, and the Basque country has gradually diminished and, and, you know, moved away from international media attention. So those, answer your question specifically, to those supportive of independence in the Basque country are very much looking to Catalonia today to see how can we proceed, how can we build a movement for independence and are absolutely inspired by what's happened in Catalonia and how far they've gone. Even though they haven't achieved independence, of course, but they've advanced mm -hmm. in one sense further than the Basques were ever able to, even with a violent campaign behind them. That is something that the, um, the um, terrorists have in mind, you know, that uh, the Catalonia process has opened to them uh, the possibility of, of achieving their goals by other means, not just killing people. But um, what is unacceptable, or, or there, there is a way that they, uh, they can definitely abandon um, violence, and that is by also helping um, to solve all the more than 300 um, um, crimes that are unsolved and to show uh, really um, to show that they really um, regret the damage they've done. Um, but I'm, well, I agree with Andrew that uh, the Catalan example has been uh, some, is something that the uh, terrorists have in mind. Okay, other than the terrorists, though, let's just talk, Carlos, about those who are looking for some sort of greater autonomy or independence for the Basque state. Um, is it fair to conclude that Madrid will do everything it can to make sure that the Basque people will not follow Catalonia's model. 
Well, um, as regarding the fact of achieving a greater autonomy, that's absolutely impossible because uh, the Basque Country is uh, the region with the highest uh, level of autonomy in the whole Europe and one of the um, regions with the highest levels of autonomy all over the world. So uh, the only step, next step would be to, uh, to grant them independence and that's absolutely innegotiable. Right for for Spain, right? Okay. And Spain um, is based on the uh, in dissolution of, of its of, of its territory. Go ahead, Andrew. If, for example, sixty percent of the of the Catalans or sixty percent of the Basques, if there's ever that substantial support for independence, would Carlos accept Catalonia or the Basque country being independent with sixty percent support? Six zero. Unlikely. As a Democrat, Carlos. What, uh, 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 Yes. Um, well, um, I think that the main the main problem with that uh, reasoning is that um, nationalists present that uh, percentage of people supporting um, independence as a natural process that comes up spontaneously from society, and that is that is really that's the simplistic thing. I uh, to believe that that is something that has happened from from one day to another, right? There's been a, a very long process of manipulation of creating a state of opinion in both the Catalan and Basque. Um, um, in societies by the uh, successive nationalist governments and also um, um, so a really yes or high no to investment my question? in the middle. Uh, I'm answering the question. So that will be okay. We could talk about that only after a period of neutrality of the institutions that should last at least 30 or 40 other years, right, to reconduct society to a really um, natural, if you want me. To, uh, to use that word, situation. So um, to negotiate with pro-independence parties in, in the present situation or in the pr situation created in the Basque country where, as I said before, more than 100,000 people had to, um, to leave the Basque country because they were threatened by the violence and the crimes of, of ETA. Then to start a negotiation departing from that, from that situation, from that point that's absolutely um, unacceptable, okay. right? That, that can't be the case. I'd like to thank both of you so much for joining us on this okay. edition of the Newsmakers. Unfortunately, You're we welcome. are completely out of time.